all right YouTube. So recently I was watching Succession and I love the opening titles of Succession. For me, they are up there with Dexter and Sopranos. Those are probably my top three in no particular order. But there's one thing on the season three titles for Succession in particular, there's one thing that really bothered me. I love the theme tune, I love the thematic depth of those titles, but there's one thing that bothered me and it was that somewhere in there, They've used a random still photo. The rest of it is all footage. It's either modern footage of Logan and the kids, or there's like archival footage, or the stock footage of the city. But there's one shot where it's just, and it's of the Waystar Studios, where it's just a still photo. And all they've done is done like a slight zoom on it. And it really bothers me because there's no other still photos in there and it really sticks out to me like a sore thumb. And the reason it bothers me is because it's so easy to fix. So that's one of the things that we're gonna look at today. Around the same time that I noticed that in the succession titles, I was working on a project where I had to do some establishing exterior shots of Windsor Castle. And finding stock footage of Windsor Castle was really hard. I could find a few photos, but not much stock. I found a couple of shots, but I needed some more. So what I ended up doing was taking a still photo and turning it into a video. And I'm going to show you the method that I used to do that today. So let's just jump straight into Premiere and get going. Okay, so we're inside After Effects, not Premiere Pro, as I said at the top, because I just find it easier in After Effects. I'm pretty sure you could do all the stuff that I'm doing here in Premiere. I just find it easier to do it in After Effects. A lot of the same principles apply. So we're gonna look at the succession edit first. So let's jump in and have a look. So here we are in After Effects. You can see here I've got one comp set up for the succession edit and one comp here set up for the Windsor Castle edit. So let's get on with the succession one. I've already imported all of the assets that I'm going to need. As we go through, I'll talk you through where I got all the assets and things like that from. Uh, so let's take it step by step. So firstly, let's get the still. I'm using the actual still from succession. So basically I freeze framed it, grabbed a still. I'm really hoping that I don't get in trouble for using this because I'm thinking it's like fair play because it's educational and whatnot. But anyway, here's the still. Let's grab that put it into our comp. Let's scale it up ever so slightly so that we don't get any sort of cropping at the edges, hitting S and scaling up. Uh, then the other thing about succession is, is it's got um, black bars top and bottom. So I'm gonna put those in uh, to give it that sort of anamorphic feel, that more cinematic vibe. Uh, and those are doing the job straight away, don't need to resize them or anything. Okay, so that's good. So basically, what they do in succession is they've got this still, they've probably just scaled it up like this, hitting the stopwatch either end, uh, and at the end, they've probably just gone scale it up a little bit, probably to about 104, and then that's it. That's all it does is that, and then it cuts to the next shot really bothers me. So here's a couple of things that we can do. The way I think about it is when I look at a still photo, I think, well, what could possibly be moving in that photo? And the first thing that I think is obviously, to me, the trees. So what I've done is I've gone on Envato Elements and grabbed a palm tree with an alpha channel. Let's drag that in here and see what it looks like. Okay, now obviously this doesn't look good to start with, but there's a couple of things we can do to fix it. First thing we're gonna need to do is mask it because basically we pretty much only need the top bit. So let's zoom in and start to do a very rough mask. With a rough mask like that, give it a bit of a feather, toggle down there, toggle down there, or you can hit MM to open up all of your mask parameters. I'm gonna give it a feather of about five. And then what we're gonna do is zoom out and start to put this in position. So I'm gonna hit S to bring up my scale parameters, Shift P to bring up position simultaneously. And let's scale it down a touch because it's a bit big. Uh, and let's find where we want to put it. So I'm going to put it over on top of this tree 
here. Now I'm not trying to hide the other trees because basically all you're trying to do is give the photo a little bit of movement. Obviously if you look closely you'll be able to see that other things aren't moving but hopefully because it's so fleeting it'll be enough to make it look like it's video. I'm going to hit R to bring up some rotation and just change the rotation of that ever so slightly. Okay and then I'm going to hit S and Shift P to bring that back up. Um, and then we're going to look at the colour correction of this to try and make it sit in the scene a little bit more. So effect, uh, you can get out colour correction and Lumetri colour is what I'm going to use for it. I already have Lumetri colour here so I'm going to do that. And to me, looking at it, it looks to me like I need to take the contrast down a little bit. I need to warm it up a touch. I think I probably need to take the saturation down a touch maybe. Yeah, it definitely needs to come down a touch. And then I'm going to take the shadows down. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit better. Okay, the other thing that I'm going to do is it's much sharper than everything else in the image. So right click, effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur, I mean immediately that's much better. I think it's probably got a little too much blur on it. Let's go to about three and see what that looks like. Okay, let's click off. That is already starting to look like it's sitting in the scene a little bit more. Uh, I've probably dropped the saturation a little bit too much. Do you know what? For the sake of this tutorial, I'm already all right with how that is looking. So let's have a look. We're going to come out fit up to 100% and just see what that gives us. Right, so immediately we've got something happening there. Uh, what I've noticed is I'm going to turn the scale off on this. Uh, I am going to do a scale animation later, but I'm going to do it with a null object so that the whole thing scales up. So for now, I'm turning that off, uh, which means I need to reposition this tree to make it look a little bit more like it's actually sitting on top of where it's supposed to be. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So basically now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep duplicating this tree and put it all along this line here so that it looks like they're all moving. I'll do the first one in real time and then I'll speed up so that I've done the rest uh, and then we'll be good to go. So copy and paste. Now the first thing I'm going to do is shift this over so that we haven't got exactly the same movement. Even moving it by a second should do the trick. Then I'm going to drag this layer, put it behind the other layer, take it over here, hit S to scale it down to probably about there, shift it up. Uh, it's probably a bit small, so let's try around 57, 58. That's looking a bit better. The other thing that you can do to make it look a bit different is unclick the link scale and click minus 58, which just reverses it so that it looks a little bit different. Then, in case you want to scale it up or down again, relink it. So that looks looking pretty decent. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just do the rest of them and I'll speed up the video so that you don't have to watch me do the entire thing. Okay, so if we play this back now, you can see that it just gives it a little bit of motion. So what I've done is, on the trees, as they go further back, I've increased the blur on the trees so that they don't all look exactly the same. So some of them are flipped, some of them have different saturation, some of them have different contrast, uh, some of them uh, have different blur, so as the trees go further back the blur increases um, just so that they're all a bit different because otherwise I think you would notice if they were all moving and they all looked exactly the same then you probably would notice that even if it's fleeting. So let's play it back and see what we've got. See already that's starting to look like video rather than photo. Th to be honest that would probably be enough for this one. But there are some other things that you can do to improve this. Um, for example, you could, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra movement, um, 
I've got this bird pack here, right? So you could uh, take some birds, drop some birds in there. Now they look absolutely massive. So let's scale those down. Make them so they're really small. Put them so it may be so that it looks like they're gonna fly out from behind this building. Uh, we'll change the color correction in a minute, but for now, let's zoom in and just mask out around this building. Okay, so we've got a rough mask around the building and it looks like the birds are coming out. And what I've done is I've shifted this layer of the birds towards the end, because basically what happens is they start to drift off here. So if we highlight this, you can see that this is the edge of, technically the edge of frame for those birds. So as they start to fly off, they start to disappear. Here. So rather than do any complicated masking, what I've done is before they get to the edge of this frame here, I've just shifted the whole layer over so that before they can disappear, you get to the end of the comp, basically. So rather than do any complicated masking, that's just what I've done. So uh, let's try and add some color correction and some other effects to these birds to make them blend into the scene a little bit more. I will say I am not a massive comp person. I'm more an animation and motion graphics type person. But I do enjoy a bit of comping, but I'm just not the best at it. So there we go. A bit of blur on there looks pretty good. Let's do a tiny bit of color correction just to try and make them sit in there a little bit more. Lumetri color, to be honest, it's probably just the contrast and maybe the highlights just to make them sit in there a little bit more and take the highlights down a bit let's play that back and see what we get trees are moving birds are coming do you know what that looks pretty good okay to be honest what i would probably do if it was me actually doing the edit for this I would probably just have the trees and then do a scale up using a null, which we'll get to in a second. But for the sake of fun, let's add something else in there. So what I've done is I've gone on Envato Elements and I've got a 3D image of a car. So what you can do is they, they do renders, 3D renders, and you can choose the angle that you'd like to get something. So I've chosen this car here, which I thought we could have whooshing past in the foreground here just to give us another little extra bit of movement so let's drop that straight in this i think should be relatively straightforward so this is what you get let's hit p to bring up the position so i reckon roughly there about height wise okay let's have this come in at about 10 frames in hit position let's say it takes about a second to go past Hit our stopwatch again, go to the first one. We want to be over here. And on the second one, we want to be over here. Let's hit our motion blur over here to give it some motion blur. Not that we need to do this, but let's put some easy ease on it for the sake by hitting F9 or going keyframe assistant easy ease. And then I'm going to do one final thing to this, maybe two final things, just to give it a little bit of finesse. So what I'm going to do firstly is create a new null here. I'm going to link everything apart from the black bars to the null. And I'm going to gradually scale it up. So I'm going to hit S for my scale parameters, Shift P to bring up the position simultaneously keyframe at the start, keyframe at the end, and at the end, I'm gonna take us up to about 104, probably. And let's see what that looks like. I mean, to me, that's looking pretty good. Uh, one thing I have noticed that I'd like to do is I would like to make that car blend in a little bit more just by giving it 
Um, a bit of Lumetri colour I think it could do with warming it up a touch so that it sits in there a little bit better. Probably something around there. I'm being very rough because I just want to see how quickly we can do it basically to see how long it would have taken the editors on succession to do it. For me like this isn't something that takes a massive amount of time um, so I feel like it could have been done just to give it a little bit of a boost because when I watch those titles and I see that still photo it just sticks out like a sore thumb and for me we've done a really easy fix here. Um, last thing I think I'm going to do is bring in an adjustment layer put it underneath the black bars, add Lumetri colour to it, and I'm just going to whack on something random uh, in terms of a look, just to tie it all in so that it's got a look. Oh, I'm not going to use that because that looks awful. Let's use one of the Fuji Eterna ones. Uh, let's drop the intensity down to about 75, and that just helps tie it all in, because even though we've colour corrected the individual elements hopefully by just dropping something on top it ties it in even more so let's have a look at what we finish with like i say to be honest you could have just left it with the trees and a bit of a zoom in but by adding in the car and the birds it just gives it that little bit extra yeah that's looking all right i mean i might have put a bit more blur on these trees in the middle here but that's all that's looking pretty good to me and it looks like footage it doesn't look like a still photo so I'm pretty pleased with that let's move on to the next one all right so I've got the Windsor Castle comp opened up in After Effects let's get going first thing I'm gonna do I've got my folder with all of my Windsor Castle assets here all of the extra stuff that we're gonna add in I've downloaded all of that from Envato Elements first thing to drop in is the still photo of Windsor Castle let's drop that in all right that's absolutely massive so let's scale it down until it's the same size as the comp roughly that's looking pretty good to me okay so the first thing is looking at this let's have a look at the things that we can make move that are going to look realistic in this photo so looking up here clouds obviously that's the first thing that jumps out to me then we've got the trees so we can make some of the trees move and then we've got a flag so those are the three things that we're going to look at first thing i think we need to do is mask out the actual castle so we need to get rid of these clouds and the flag so that we can put our own in so let's get masking on the castle okay so i'm zooming in here so that i can get a good view of it let's start putting our pen tool to use and again i'm going to skip forward so that you don't have to watch me mask this whole thing out so that's done as you can see on the left hand side of the frame here i've only very roughly done these trees because i don't think it needs to be that accurate because basically we're going to cover up that area with a tree of our own so i'm not too worried about it everything else i've done an okay job it's a bit rushed but I, I think it will serve so now that we've cut it out let's grab our clouds and drop those in behind the castle and see what that looks like do you know what in terms of grade and everything that's not looking too bad i actually think i'm just going to leave that as it is for now i am going to scale it up just by one just because I want to make sure that we're not getting any black on the edge of frame at all. Sometimes what you get when you've downloaded stuff that you haven't shot yourself is that although it says it might be full HD or ultra HD, every so often you might get a little bit of black at the edge of frame. So I like to scale it up by 1% just so that you're ruling out that possibility. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is replace the flag. So let's take our flag, which I've downloaded from Envato Elements, and drop it in behind the castle. Let's scale that down a bit, and let's put it in position and see what we get. That's looking all right already. Okay, pretty happy with that. Maybe down a touch. Okay, I'm going to drop some camera lens blur onto that to so try and make it blur a little bit so that it sits in the composition as a whole a little bit better. That's looking good. Then we can grab some colour correction with Lumetri colour. And I think we probably need to drop the contrast a little bit. I think maybe warm it up. 
a touch and maybe drop the saturation so that it doesn't pop as much, maybe not that much. Probably around there. Okay, let's see what we've got. All right, that's already looking better. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's drop some trees in and see what we can do here. So remember, we've got this mask here, but I think we're gonna try and cover that up. So let's go into our tree pack, which I've got again from Envato Elements and see what we think is gonna look good. Um, not that one, no, no. What about, ah, now there. I think we're looking good. I'm going to drop that in uh, above the castle. All right, pretty happy with that. Let's drop in the alpha here and let's go luma matte. So that all we're seeing is the tree now and then let's parent the matte to the actual tree so that when we scale and move the tree, which we've got, there the alpha map moves with it okay I'm gonna hit shift P to bring up our position and then do something like that and already you can see here we've covered that mat area so we're looking all right let's see if we can try and blend this tree in a little bit better. So let's do the usuals. Let's get the metric color on the go. Let's drop the contrast a little bit. Probably a bit of warmth into there. Play around with the saturation, maybe. Looks like we need to drop it ever so slightly. Do you know what? That really isn't looking bad. Just for a quick job, that's not looking bad. Let's drop a little bit of uh, blur onto it, not that much. Just to take a touch of the sharpness out of it so that it's not as sharp as everything else is in the image. And then maybe a bit of green tint, a bit more warmth into it. Do you know what? That's looking all right. Let's play that back and see what we get. So after playing it back a couple of times, I've made a couple more adjustments just uh, to try and blend the tree in a little bit more. I made some adjustments to uh, the Lumetri color uh, to change the um, color settings on it to make it blend in a little bit more. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with that. So next thing I'm gonna do is put another tree over here in the middle. So let's find a good one. Oh, I mean, that's the one straight away. All right, let's drop in tree number three and let's also drop in its alpha channel. Let's go to Luma Matte. All right, sweet. And let's parent that alpha channel to the tree, to the main layer, so that when we move it around, it moves with it. Okay, so something like that, and I want it to be roughly over here, just so that it's right in the middle of the shot, and it's got, because it's got movement on it, it's most likely that the viewer's eye will go straight to that, it's got movement, and the viewer will immediately think, oh, well, this is a video. If you look closely, you're gonna be able to see that it's a photo, but your immediate thought is gonna be, it's a video. And the majority of people won't look that closely. As filmmakers, we will, and we might be able to spot it, but most people won't be able to spot it, I don't think. So let's try and start blending this in now. The first thing we need to do is, look, we need to mask out the bottom of this so that it's sitting in the image a bit better. So let's grab our pen tool. Again, it only needs to be rough, because once you start putting a feather on it, you're not gonna notice all of this stuff because it's far enough back in the image that you won't be able to see. So let's click down on our mask here and change it from add to subtract. Let's feather it a little bit. And then, unless you're looking really closely, most people aren't gonna notice. Okay, so at 400%, you can sort of see the joins there. It is sort of dipping behind the bush, but let's zoom out 
and you can't tell, you can't tell at all. So easiest thing to do to make this blend in is I'm gonna go into this tree that we've already done. I'm gonna take the Lumetri color off it, put it onto this one and we'll see what we get. I mean, immediately that's looking way better. Okay, so, so far we've done a couple of trees, a flag and the clouds. Let's have a look, play back and see what this looks like. All right, I think that's looking pretty good. There's a couple more things that we can do. First, I'm gonna create a new null object. I'm gonna pair everything that we've got so far to the null. I'm gonna to go to the top here. I'm gonna hit S for our scale. I'm gonna to go to the end of our comp and I'm just gonna scale it up by maybe 3%. And then finally, I'm gonna go and add in an adjustment layer. I'm gonna add Lumetri color to it. And this again is just to tie it all together. So even though we've tried to blend everything in in terms of the color, like the trees and the flag, etc., just by dropping something on like this, hopefully it just ties it all together a little bit nicer. And there you go. Okay, let's play that back and see what we've got. So that's a very quick example of how you can turn a photo into video. I know that on these you can see some of the masking and stuff like that, but to be honest, if you spent a little bit more time doing it, you can make it look a lot better than I have today. This is all just like rough examples of how to do this sort of thing. When I did this one uh, on a professional job, I sent it to my producer and I didn't even tell them that I'd taken a photo and turned it into video and they didn't even notice. It took me about half an hour. So that just shows for me, it's totally worth it for half an hour to be turning a photo into video rather than just using a photo and just slowly zooming in on it. I totally think it's worth it. And personally, if I was working on Succession, like that's ever gonna happen. But if I was, that's what I would have done. So there you go, that's the method that I use to turn a stock photo into video. I'm sure there are lots of other methods, but hopefully this is something that you can utilize and adapt in future to help you do the same thing. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a like and a subscribe. I'm gonna be making more videos in future, so look out for them. See you soon. Peace.